I always like to have a good book here in the wall tent with me, or a couple at least anyway. And the fact of the matter is, you know, always be a student. That's what I can tell you. No matter what, you don't know everything. You know, I'm reading a book right now, Peterson's Field Guide to the Eastern Force. I do not know everything there is to know. So if I learn something new from this book tonight, then I'm going to be happy. And that's my plan for the next hour is just sit here, relax, read a book, and then fall asleep. Afternoon, guys. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters at Pathfinder School back out here at the hunting camp. And I wanted to talk to you today about power options, portable power options, for something like we're doing out here at the hunting camp. Now, you would think you might carry something like a Blue Eddy or an Anchor or some kind of a big brick system like a Jackery. Really, for me, that's not necessary for this system, and it's not the best for this system. All of those type charging units, if you're going to run a radio off them, are going to give you interference with the radio as they are running. So you really don't want that. You want like a static 12-volt system to run your radio off of. And then you want to be able to charge things off that as well. So the two components that I carry are a PowerFilm Lightsaver Max and a 12-volt BioNO battery that I can charge solar. And we'll talk about that and talk about this in this video, so stay with me. All right, so again, the most portable power option that I have of the two is this Lightsaver Max. It is a 12-volt system, and that's important to understand because it will run my computer, and it will run my radio system as well. It will run both of them if it has to, but it will definitely charge both of them as well because there's an internal battery, or excuse me, an external battery on the 705 as well as on the ID52 that can be charged with this device. Now, what you have here is basically you have a long brick that has a built-in solar panel that you just unfurl, and it's like a 20-watt panel, and you throw this thing out there and you charge the main brick with this solar panel. And then when you're not charging it, it all rolls up onto the tube itself. And then I've just got a couple of hair ties on here to hold it on there. Real, real simple like that, okay? It has two ends on it. It has one end that has a power button, a USB-C in if you want to charge it that way, or a 12-volt in if you want to charge it that way. The 12-volt in allows me to charge it with another solar panel if I want to. And I don't have to necessarily use this solar panel if I have a more powerful one to charge it with. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes, okay? The other side of it, which is important, has two USB ports on it. So now I can charge my phones, my cameras, my drone, uh, my external my external speaker that I listen to audiobooks on, all that kind of stuff that you charge by USB, you can charge off of this one brick. Makes it very conducive. And it's got a 12-volt outlet on it, banana plug, so you can actually run your radio directly off of this if you need to to get that maximum 10 watts you need from a 12 volt system if you don't have your other system charged and so this is one part of my system and this is the backpackable i can take it and go away from hunting camp and then i have a less portable but still portable battery that i use here at camp now the sun is in right now but what we have here is we have a bio no solar panel and this is a 100 watt panel okay and it plugs in the back side here to a charge controller and a battery that I'm going to show you. But I wanted you to see how this BioNO panel works because it folds up into a briefcase style situation. There's the BioNO power logo on it. And then you just unfurl it and you can adjust it for angularity on the back to get whatever angle you want is best for you with the sun, depending on your latitude. So right now, I can tell you, we'll look at it close in a minute here. But on a cloudy day, we're only getting 14 watts out of this thing. It was getting 65 a few minutes ago when it was a little less cloud cover and the sun was more out. So it's going to vary depending on the sun, obviously, and how much direct sunlight this panel can pick up. But it's charging nonetheless constantly. Now, this particular setup, this is my BioNO battery setup. So you have a 12-volt BioNO battery in here that fits perfect in this Pathfinder molly case the charge controller from buddy pole 
sits right on top of that and it gives you all the information you need, including not letting the battery overcharge, but where you're at charge wise, how much the battery's got left, how much life is in it, how much draws on it, how much input's going into it from the solar panels. All that information is on this buddy pole power mini two. So this is a very good piece of equipment to have. In the front pocket of this, I've got the wall charging situation. So if I'm somewhere where I've got this and I've got access to that 110 volt plug, I can plug it into that and I'm ready to rock and roll. So between this battery and that power foam solar max or that power foam lightsaver max and this solar panel, I've got everything I need to run all the power equipment out here that I've got at the hunting camp, very, very mobile. Okay, so we've plugged this laptop in now, and you can see that's a standard plug for this Surface Pro. But what I've done is I've taken that plug, and I've just ordered another one off the internet, and I've put power pole connectors on the end of it instead of going to the 12-volt charging system that converts it to 110 in your house. So now I can run that laptop or charge that laptop right off this BioNO 12-volt battery. And that's the beauty of this system is... You set it up so that it's very conducive for everything that you're carrying. And if most of what you've got is 12 volt or USB in some way, shape or form, you're in good shape. And it's really easy to carry power for that without having to carry something as large as say an anchor or a Jackery or a Blue Eddy or anything like that because you're not using that much power to begin with. And it's easy enough to charge it with a solar panel. All right, so the last thing I wanna to talk to you guys about real quick when it comes to this whole power in a mobile hunting camp goes, is lighting, all right? I carry two lights in this hunting camp with me. They look very similar, but they are much different in price. So I wanna talk through both of them with you and talk to you about the price, and you can decide which one you think is the best bang for the buck or what you wanna go with. So the first one we'll talk about is the less expensive one. This is called a tough light. Now it's only 400 lumens of light and it's got kind of a frosty, covering on it but it gives a pretty good amount of light it's got three settings and it also has red and a flash in red that's all you get for your money on that deal it's got a nice swing handle on it it also has a hook on the bottom of it so you can hang it if you want to upside down it's a plastic hook it's not a really strong hook but i haven't broken it yet and you can see it's pretty dang dirty this is the one i carry in my overlanding truck it does have a rechargeable battery in the bottom of it with a cable and it is USB chargeable, but it also is a battery in itself. So once you charge it up, you have a USB battery you can use to maybe charge a cell phone or something like that quick and dirty if you needed to. So it's kind of an extra little battery bank on top of being a light for the tent itself. This thing, I don't know exactly how much it is on Amazon now. I don't even know if it's in my Amazon store, but it might be. However, I think this thing was around 30 or 40 bucks at the most, somewhere around the $35 mark. I believe this one's about three years old, okay? So obviously it's tough enough because I've beat the crap out of this thing. Now, this one is the Streamlight, okay? This one is 1,000 lumens. If you need that much light, it's 1,000 lumens. Uh, turn it on. There you go. It also has red, two settings of red and a flash, all right? Three settings on white. So, a couple things that are different about this light, okay? It has the same type of swing handle on it, but it has a shield on it on the back side so that you can kind of direct the light. And it's got more of that soft light cover. But I have found that this cover, fits this other light just fine too so it's kind of multifunctional if you want to use it that way on a different light you can change it back and forth and it just snaps on this one also has hooks on it it has a hook on the top and the bottom and these are metal hooks it has one on the top and it has one on the bottom as well swing gate carabiner style hooks both of them are metal this one has the same opening compartment on the bottom of it the batteries aren't exposed and you can put a usb cable in there if you want to to charge it and you can see here it has power and use in out 
So again, you have a situation where you've got a charging port and you have an outlet port on this thing so that you can do either one. And you can charge this one with the banana plug if you want to, not just a USB. So you've got quite a bit more power with this one. You've got quite a bit more juice with this one. You've got a little bit more functionality with this one. This one is quite a bit heavier because it's got a bigger battery in it, I would imagine is why it's so much heavier. But it's also more than twice the price. So if you look for this, Streamlight Super Siege is the name of this thing. And I'm pretty sure this one is like 120 bucks. So, you know, it's kind of up to you what you think is the best bang for the buck for you. They're a little interchangeable if you wanted to buy one of each instead of buying two, or if you only wanted one. The main reason I have the two is because I have had this one for a long time, and I wanted to find out how much better this was for the money, so I bought it so I could kind of tell you guys how much better it is or how much better it's not for that amount of money that costs more than this one does. But you can see they're very, very similar in size. This one does weigh quite a bit more, but it has quite a bit more lumens and quite a bit more power. So that being said, this is the lighting units that I carry. However, I also have my headlight, right? All of which can be charged off this same system that we're talking about here. And both of these are actually bricks as well. If you needed to use them as bricks in an emergency, if everything was out of power, you were trying to charge your phone or something, you could do it with one of these two lights. All right, guys. Well, listen, I'm going to get back out of here at the wall tent this morning. What I've been doing today, just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm doing is, I'm kind of switching back and forth between FT8 digital modes and voice. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to get used to understanding all the different settings because there are some things that you have to change settings on within the radio to get this to change from digital mode or FT8 to voice. Now, you do have some presets in there, and those presets work fine. But you also have some settings in the computer programs themselves, like JSTX, that should stay the way they are. But when you go to changing things back and forth, Sometimes, and when you're changing different types of modes that you're using, sometimes settings get jacked up. And if you don't understand exactly what those settings are supposed to be, and they're not perfect, it's not going to work. So I've been kind of going back and forth day to day just to kind of get used to the practice of doing that. And now I'm going to start working on JSA call. And again, the reason for that is all skills are perishable and communication skills are important. Yesterday's video, when we talked, a lot of people were like, oh, you're using reflectors in the internet and that stuff's not going to be any good with EMPs and all of that. Okay, yeah, okay. The world comes to an end. No internet. I get it, right? However, point of purpose, another tool for the box. What I'm doing right now requires no internet whatsoever. This is FT8. JSA call requires no internet whatsoever. Uh, Vera, which sends text. You can even send pictures over Vera, but you can send text over the radio, again, no internet required. Voice, no internet required. CW or Morse code, no internet required. So there's lots of things you can do with these radios and play with different aspects that there's no internet required. But things that do require internet, like Winlink, things like Doozy, those things are all viable tools at certain times as well. And they get you more used to using the radio, talking on the radio, doing things with radio, changing programs back and forth on the radio, and they make you a more well-rounded operator. And I think that's what's really important. And there's been a couple questions on this video, what my license class is. I'm a general class license. I don't have my extra yet. I haven't taken the time to study for it. It really doesn't open up that much more bandwidth to have the extra than the general. So if I was going to tell somebody, hey, go get this, I would say get your technician, get your general. And then when you have time, worry about getting something else but the general opens up that hf to you instead of just being able to deal with two meters and 70 centimeters like you can on a technician license so that being said i appreciate your views i appreciate your support i thank you for everything you do for school for family for business all our sponsors instructors affiliates and friends and i'll be back with another video guys as soon as i can thanks